Uh, aloha, sir. Hi, may I please have your name? Uh, basically, where you are, what is it about? And maybe some contact information or other important, maybe like a website and stuff like that. Oh, yeah? Mahalo. Hi, my name is Glenn Martinez. I'm a farmer out in Waimanalo, Hawaii. When I say a farmer, I'm a certified organic farmer, USDA, and uh, we specialize in doing aquaponics. And that's where you raise fish in the water, you take the water, you pump it through the vegetables, you bring it back. We see it as a solution for urban farming. Uh, we believe that the next group of farmers are not going to come from the Midwest. In fact, the next generation of farmers are unlikely to have parents as farmers. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to come up with an entirely new generation. Uh, currently, right now, I happen to be a little above average. First time in my life I've done something above average. That's because the average age is 60 years old for a farmer, and I'm 62. See? I'm ahead of the game. What's the problem with that? How many more years of farming are you going to get out of a 60-year-old guy? So we need young farmers, and we see aquaponics as a solution for it. It's techy enough, it's productive enough, but the most important thing is it's profitable enough. So we champion it. So what's my role in life? Well, I'm president of Hawaii Farmers Union. We're the second largest farm organization in the state. When you come down to that, we do small family farms. That's our specialty, okay? And so when you talk about sustainability, that is, i.e., the ability to keep farming as a way of life, we intend our farmers to be farmers. 97% of the farmers in, home, in America have a job off the farm. When I was growing up in 1967, only 2% of the farmers had a full-time job. About 30% of the farmers worked part-time, seasonal work, winter work, you know, that kind of thing. Construction work, a little roofing on the side, repairing equipment or that. But their main job was being a farmer. Well, things have changed, okay? Recently, I heard a song, Simon and Garfunkel, and I bought the song, The Times Are Changing. Oddly enough, that song is as true today as the first time I heard it 40 years ago. Amazingly timely. Times are changing, okay? For me, if you're, in a, if you're a solutionist, and that's what we are at Olamana Gardens, my farm. By the way, if you'd like to see the story of Olamana Gardens, it's www.olamanagardens.com. You'll see our life story. You'll see the pictures of our little five-acre farm. You'll see four horses, seven milking goats, a pig, 200 egg-laying chickens, and about three and a half million worms, even though it's hard to get an exact count on the little guys, okay? <laughs> they won't line up. They won't stand still, okay? A lot like my children. So we come up to what are we doing in Hawaii? Well, I've been traveling, teaching aquaponics. I've got to go to China, I've gone to Korea, I've been a couple of trips to the Philippines, West Samoa, American Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, teaching aquaponics and organic gardening. And I gotta tell you a few truths. One is, you go to Shanghai, 35 million people, 35 million in a city, growing at 20 to 30,000 a day growing in. When you see the big crane over the skyscraper, the big guy, we call him the, the construction bird, you know, up there. One city, Shanghai, has two-thirds of the world's supply of cranes. They're growing rapidly. Now, for anybody that thinks growth is the solution, needs to go to Shanghai and see the lack of quality of life, see that they're a food desert, see how far their food has to travel to get to them and the total mercy of the truckers. Here in Hawaii, we're the total mercy of airplanes and boats, okay? You just trade in one warden for another warden, all right? Now, on the other hand, go to Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba, about three and a half million people, I'm told, and they grow 85% of their food within the city limits. The other 15%, it comes from about 10 miles away. Not more than 10, why? Because you know, it isn't practical to ride a bike more than 10 miles, and that does it. People talk about affordable ag land. Hey, in Cuba, if the farmer doesn't pay anything for the land. Use it or lose it, yeah? Farmers there are very respected. I go to Japan, very respected. Korea, 
You are cream of the crop. You're pillar of the community, right? You come to Hawaii, and I, people say, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm a farmer. And there's a pregnant pause, and they lean forward, and they say, come on, what does your wife do to support you? Because if you're a stay-home farmer, that's a little bit questionable, you know? Because you, nobody believes you can actually make a living doing it. Fact is, in my community of Waimanalo, 75% of my valley is zoned agricultural, okay? 75% of the population of my valley is native Hawaiian. We're talking 50% Hawaiian, not a trace of Hawaiian. We're talking about homestead Hawaiian qualified, you know, for all the binnies of being, quote, a real Hawaiian. Well, 75% of the population is Hawaiian. 75% of the land is zoned agricultural. How many Hawaiians are on that land? Two. And they're both on my farm. Now that is sad. I cannot find one Hawaiian owning a farm and operating a farm. Yeah? So there's a little imbalance there, would you say? So what we're doing, we're putting aquaponics in the backyard of every homestead house we can. Start growing your own food. You gotta get independent. And you can't be independent if you're renting a house and renting your food. People say, what are you renting your food? You know what? If you're going down to the grocery store and you're buying every week, ask them when you make your last payment. You know, kind of odd. I go to Starbucks, I buy 10 cups, I get one cup free. I go down to the grocery store, I said, hey, I've been buying here for 10 months. Do I get one month free? Do I get a six pack of beer for free? What? No, there's no gimmies. Yeah? So we're in an upset situation. Now, I teach aquaponics, I teach organic garden. I get a Filipino lady comes to me. It's very obvious that the 20 people sitting in the room that this lady's nodding at the right time. She knows what I'm saying. And when I say something a little bit questionable, I see her shaking her head and on and on. I go, yeah, yeah, Auntie, well, let me explain. And I realize this lady knows as much as I do. She's passing judgment on everything I say. I also know she has two Lolos with her, right? Who are kind of, and she's elbowing them from time to time to pay attention, right? And then I finally asked her to break. I said, Auntie, what are you doing here? I, you're, you're, you garden, don't you? She says, oh yes, I do. Yeah, and she says, and I know as much as you do. And I said, then why are you here? She says, because I cannot teach, and you can teach. And these two guys, they've been coming over my fence. I want them to stop coming over my fence. I tell them I want to, them to grow their own. They have bigger yards than I do. And they say, but Auntie, we don't know how. So I paid for their way to come here today. I want you to teach them to not crawl over my fence. And you know what? The guys were never gonna pick up a pick and a hoe. They were never gonna turn a shelf of dirt. And as they pointed out, the land in the homestead did not lend itself to gardening. She was doing container gardening. But that wasn't really their cup of tea. But they liked the thing with the aquaponics. They liked raising the fish. They liked that there's no weeding. They liked that it was waist high and they didn't have to bend over and they didn't have to break a sweat and all. So what we did is take away the unappealing things of farming and got back to the part they love the best. We make money. It's an income job. It's not just eating mustard greens out of your backyard. It's growing basil and selling it for $15 a pound. Yeah, and they go, wow, you mean there's actual money? It's watching me pull up a fish that weighs six to seven pounds and somebody hand me 50 bucks for one fish. Why? Heck of a lot cheaper than an ahi. You know, you can't get ahi at $8 a pound very a lot of times around here. But the tilapia, we got restaurants paying us up to $12 a pound for live fish. So when they see the dollar signs, it starts making economic sense. You want to keep the farmer on the land? Keep the money in the bank. It's got to show a profit. Because my generation is retiring and they're buying a little gentleman farm and they got the retirement income and they're paying to have their hobby farms. They subscribe to magazines titled Hobby Farms. Well, this is not a hobby to me. This is my living. So I has to make money. And money is sustainable, you know? Sure, you like to grow your own food, but you know what? You gotta pay the electric company. I'd like to be off grid. You gotta buy the solar panel. Somewhere, the cash has gotta hit the barrel head. 
So what we're about doing is teaching sustainable farming. And I want to keep Hawaii, not Shanghai. I don't want it to look like Hong Kong. You know, there's time. I did 23 years as an electrical contractor. I grew out of it and I became a farmer. I want to teach all my construction buddies there's another way of life. You know? So think about this. You see somebody talking to a young prostitute and talking her out of being a prostitute, there's another way of making a living. For me, the 23 years I worked as an electrician, I was a male prostitute. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, well, I'm going to give your name and how can they oh, reach you? Okay. Glenn Martinez, Olamata Gardens. Just go to olamatagardens.com. If you want a phone, it's 808-237-0842. If you want to email me, it's Hawaii Farmers Union, HFU Glenn at gmail.com. If you're thinking about getting involved, think about joining the Hawaii Farmers Union. Get informed. Mahalo, mahalo, sir. Yeah. Aloha.